So with me now is a Fatima old boy himself and currently the head of department for both the religion and the VAPA departments here at Fatima College, Mr. Shad Sitan. Mr. Sitan, thank you for joining me this morning. Thanks for having me, sir. Uh, so how has it been uh, moving from the day-to-day -day, um, regular scheduled program right. here at Fatima College to the virtual reality? And how were you involved <laughs> in making, helping the college make that transition? Well, it has been hectic and I think it still is going to be hectic moving forward um, but we got through thankfully thank God for that how have I been involved um, in I suppose in, in two major ways um, mobilizing and trying to spearhead and um, and help the entire school as a whole um, but also helping my department to move forward um, with distance learning um, so initially in helping the school, I think we had to decide what platforms we were going to use, what would be the best platforms for the things that we would be able to do. And we decided on Zoom, and we also decided on Google Classroom. And that's because many of our teachers had already been to the Google Classroom, for want of a better term. And for every student who comes into Fatima College, we make a Google account for them, a Google School account. So it, it was really easier using um, Google Classroom and not something like, I suppose, Microsoft Teams that other schools I, I know might have been using. And then, as I said, we decided to use Zoom. And, and, that's just, and that's more so because Zoom had some of the features that we were looking for for classroom management in an online classroom space. So initially it was that and putting those things together. And then, as I said, the second thing was getting religion and VAPA on board. And it was particularly initially challenging for VAPA. And that's because we are practical subjects. So the, the visual arts and performing arts. So it was for my teachers to find interactive um, ways to reach out to our boys, to make them want to come to class and to do the things online. So, and I think we did really, really very well in in those things in reaching out to our boys online and getting them to reach back to us so what practical things had to be done to <laughs> overcome those those very practical challenges and uh, in, the, in, the, in, in keeping in mind that there was no warning right to, to what we would now be in well as I said so there was that visioning phase for us where we decided are right, we're going to use the platforms and then we had to um, get our teachers ready. So when we got the word that school was shutting down, um, I think most of us here at Fatima College decided that we needed to get our brains ready for this thing. And I know many people started to think, how would we move forward? And so I know there was a lot of collaboration on our side there. And some of the practical ways were, some of our boys were not using the Google School account. So there were many times where we had to reset codes and we started to liaise with the um, parent support group as well, the PSG. And that's how we were able to reach out to as many boys and parents as we could have. Resetting codes, getting passwords to them. Um, they would um, either message me or they might message two other teachers who were on like an ad hoc team that I kind of formed. Um, and that's how we got the boys ready for joining the Google Classrooms. But then we had to get the teachers and some teachers um, were not necessarily ready for distance learning. Some of the older ones and even some of the younger ones. So we had to find ways. And I think one of the things that I decided to do to help the process was to make some short-ish YouTube videos. <laughs> um, to try to get people to know what to do in order to set up Google Classrooms. Um, there's a particular teacher, um, one of the older ones, who really and truly, anytime she had problems, she would either send me a WhatsApp message, call me. And I it was really, I was, I was really kind of in awe to see that she needed to contact her students. And so no matter what the challenge was, she decided she was going to interact with the students, get the content out there, and get them to be in class. 
um, for the Bapa and religion side of it, I think I haven't spoken about religion yet, and we have had major troubles there, and that's because religion is not a testable subject here. So that's one of the major problems. So you're not going to find the boy. So where's the other subjects are testable? Um, and we have that high stakes exam for religion. It's one of those spaces where we allow our boys to be able to learn more about God, to get a little ticky time out for want of a better term, and to just a, a calm space, um, but also to interact with God, this entity who we need to remind them every day of his presence, right? And especially in the online space. So it was for me reaching out to my teachers and getting them to reach back in to those boys and to facilitate spaces. And some of the boys decided to sometimes not always appear in the religion classes. But for those who did, I think we had very, very profound classes with them. Um, for VAPA, when I was perusing some of the VAPA classrooms, um, for example, in art and, and our teacher here, Daryl Signori, seeing his teaching techniques, the strategies he would use to get the boys, and sometimes even using Zoom, he would be there and painting and showing them what to do, showing them the strategies and the styles used in visual arts. And the boys would be there looking on and he would get them to emulate and then take pictures of or take pictures of the process and post um, as part of their homework, which he would then correct. So, as I said, there were those challenges, but we found ways, even if it wasn't in the first week or wasn't in the second week, by the third, fourth weeks, maybe even into the second month, we decided that we would be open to dealing with every single challenge that we had. However, this new normal looks going forward. There would be aspects of this that may be here to stay. Mm. How do you see us as an institution going forward with the new realities, even post-COVID? Right. Um, well, <laughs> the ministry recently put out some guidelines, some controversial guidelines. But I do think blended learning has to be a part of um, our way forward. Um, not necessarily the process with which, which they outline in the document, but blending learning has to be. And it's something I think even before we were sent home, even before the pandemic, some of the teachers here at Fatima, that's one of the ways that we decided to actually reach out to our boys. Sometimes we would have our face-to-face -face class here, but then we would make a Google Classroom and allow our boys, or we would sometimes repost the content that was done in class for them to review. But sometimes we just give them a space where they don't necessarily have to write the homework in the book because sometimes it could be kind of boring for them. But giving them that online space where they can actually do an assignment and submit it in this virtual domain. So I do think blended learning is, is here to stay. Um, so that's one of the ways that we are going to move forward um, in the classroom. Um, how else? I think at Fatima College here, we are setting up the things that we need um, for the future, taking into consideration um, the guidelines that the Ministry of Health has put out. So, I, and I think for us being in the education system, it is always about making our boys aware of what is happening and dealing with that head on. Just to give you an example, um, one of the things that we did in our religion classes over the time period was not necessarily just to talk about God or being in the sky or being in heaven, but about dealing with and allowing our boys to express how they felt about being in this pandemic, being in this situation, being in a situation that many of us don't even know, I have never really encountered before. And for them, I think that type of catharsis was necessary for them to be able to express themselves. Some of them were frustrated. Some of them were happy initially um, that they didn't have to come to school. But then they realized that this was something that they were not accustomed with. At the end of the situation, at the end of our teaching term, I did an evaluation session with my boys, all of my boys, 
because I wanted feedback from them in terms of the teaching that took place. And I told them, we are going as well to try to chart the future based on the present and the past. We have to learn from our mistakes. Some of the boys said, sir, I don't mind staying home now in a while because I could wake up, brush my teeth, sit on that chair and I'll, I'm just home. And, and there are many others, I would say 90% who want to come back. They want to see their friends. They want to talk to their friends. Interacting with their friends in the future is going to be different, but they still want that type of interrelationship, that type of intimacy. And as teachers here at Fatima, we are not just here to teach them their subject. I'm an English teacher. I'm not just here to teach them about English. We're here to teach them about life. And when we have life challenges, we have to educate them and give them the tools to deal with these challenges. So how we are dealing with the future? By helping our boys to deal with every single challenge and to strive on. Thank you very much, Mr. Sita. And as we continue to discuss how we here at Fatima College have embraced a new normal that has been as a result of COVID-19.